MathCAD Prime 10 now has advanced input controls like buttons, which can perform scripted actions. Here I have a worksheet where a person can choose from a list control what kind of dice that they want to use. For example, a dodecahedron is a 12-sided dice. And then they can hit this button called roll the dice, which will then generate a random roll of the dice for them. Here it is, a value of 11. I will click OK. Let's change to an icosahedron and then roll the dice. And here we have a different number. And I can change to a cube, regular six-sided die, and then roll it. And here we get a five. So let's take a look at how we can create these scripted controls. So here I have another worksheet. And just to explain this to you, I start off with a matrix with three columns. And the first column has the numbers one through five, which correspond to the results from this list control. And then it has the name of the dice. And then it has the number of sides on that die. And so when someone selects a choice from this list control, well, it's going to say what the number is corresponding to this matrix. Here's the output from that particular scripted control. Then I have a couple of VLOOKUP functions that will go to this matrix and extract the number of sides on that particular die and the name of it. So now I want to write a scripted control for rolling the dice. And in order to use these scripted controls, you have to know JScript or VBScript, or at least know them well enough in order to be able to write the control. I don't know JScript, but I was still able to do it. One thing that you'll want to do is go to the PTC help. And there is an example that you can download. You can copy the different math expressions from the example in the PTC help. And then you could take them. You could right click on them and choose edit. You could see the format for how this is written in VB script. Let me cancel out there. And the other one is for how it is written in JScript. But let's take a look at doing it for rolling the different kinds of dice used in Dungeons and Dragons. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to add the button control to my sheet. Let's go to the input output tab, and then I will go to the advanced dropdown. And here is the button control. You can see that it comes up and it says click here. I can make it a little bit wider if I want to. And we have a placeholder for the name of the variable. I'm going to call it throw for throwing the dice. Uh, so throw, and then here we have click here. And I want to pass these different values that were looked up from my matrix to this particular button. When you're doing other kinds of advanced controls, a lot of times you don't need to pass different inputs to it. But for this one, we definitely do want to pass some inputs. So I'm going to right click on here and choose add input and then click in the placeholder. And the first one that I'm going to pass is going to be this sides and the element index number zero. So I'll type in sides. And then for the element index operator, you can go to the matrices tables tab. And then we have our vector matrix operations. And this third one over here is the matrix index operator, which is the same as the left bracket for the keyboard shortcut. And my index number is zero. One thing to note is that when you use a VLOOKUP function, it's actually going to return an array. All right, I want to add in another input. So I'm going to choose insert right from the matrices tables tab. That gives me another placeholder. And let me type in name, the name of the variable. And then we can go to our vector matrix operators and choose the third one again for the index operator. And this is going to be index number zero as well. Be aware that the default value of the origin variable is zero. And if you want to see what that is, I think if you go to the calculation tab, you can see it over here and also change the value. Or you could just evaluate origin. Origin equals and has a value of zero. 
So anyhow, here I have the two different variables that are being passed as inputs. Let me right click on the control and then choose edit and it opens up the dialog box. I'm going to write it in JScript, uh, but let's go to the properties tab first. This is where you can change the name of the button. So let me change this to say, roll the dice. Really should be roll the die, but let's just use roll the dice. And let me go back to the script editor and let's go through this. Okay, so here we have the comment line, add your initialization code here. So here it gives you an initialization code called, or excuse me, an initialization variable called state. I'm fine with using that. And then here we have the function push button event start and then input and output. Well, the start section, I don't need to put anything underneath there, but here we have the execution section, the execution function. And let me put in some spaces in here because this is where I'm going to write most of my lines. Actually, where I'm gonna write all of my lines. And so let me start out with a nice empty blank line. And if you take a look at the example in the PTC help, it says that you sort of want to evaluate that initialization variable the one here is called state well let's go ahead and do that i'll do an if statement if state if it has a non-zero value then we're going to perform some actions so let me do an open brace for the start of the text now i'm going to take those different inputs and assign them to variables so we'll use the var statement I'll create a variable called s. This is going to be equal to, and the format for the input is going to be input with a capital I. And then the first input has an index number of zero. So I'll use open bracket, zero, close bracket, and then dot value. And then we'll finish the line with a semicolon. Let's do the next variable. I'll have a variable for the number of sides on the die, and that's going to be equal to inputs, and then one in the brackets, dot value, and then a semicolon. And now we're going to generate our random number for the roll of the dice, and I'll call it R. This is going to be equal to, now I'm going to use some standard Microsoft, their version of JavaScript, which is called JScript, uh, some of those standard functions. So let's use math.seal, in other words, round a number up, and then we're going to do a random number generator, math.random, and then we have the parentheses for that one, and then we're going to multiply it by the number of sides, that input that was assigned to the variable s. And so what that'll do is it will uh, end up taking the random number, which is between zero and one, and multiply by the number of sides on the die, and then round the number up. If you don't round the number up, well, you could actually end up rolling a zero. All right, let me put in my semicolon, and then I'm gonna create a variable for a message to be output and I will just call it MSG for message. And this is going to be equal to, and then I'll do open quote and your role for A, and then close the parentheses plus, and then I'm gonna have them put the number of sides, which is my variable S, and then plus, and then dash sided space and then the name of the die which is my variable n and then plus and then is and then the random number that is generated and then let's put exclamation in quotations like we're really excited about rolling the dice 
And now that we have that variable, we are going to output it in a message box. So that function is called message box dot show and then open parentheses in the name of that variable msg and then put in my semicolon and then the next line that we're going to put in here is setting that state variable to zero state equals zero and that is good okay so that is good and then i'm going to close my if section so let me go to the next blank line let me put in a brace and a semicolon. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I want to take the value of that rolled dice and make it the output rather than outputting the state, which is either going to be zero or one. Hey, I will, maybe I want to use this later on for a function. So let's take the variable R and make it the output. And so that is good. There is a stop section. Then there's a push button section with an if statement. I don't need to change any of this stuff in here. So this is good. I already changed my properties tab. Let's hit the apply button. And looks like I missed a uh, semicolon somewhere. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Where do I need a semicolon? Oh, okay. I figured out where my mistake is. I forgot one of my plus signs in constructing this variable. So let me put in the plus sign in here. I told you I am not a programmer. Let's hit the apply button. Hey, everything looks good in here. Let's close out of there. And then for this, I don't need to see the name of the variable. I can also collapse the input. So to not show the name of the variable, let's go back to the input output tab. I'm going to collapse the left side that way, it'll make it so that when I move this around, I can, uh, oh, I accidentally clicked it. So your role for a six-sided cube is five. Uh, but once again, let me close out of there. Let me try grabbing this. I just want to drag it over a little bit, make it a little more towards the center of the sheet. So I have my control working, and I'm also going to evaluate the name of the variable, throw is equal to. And so now let's try it again. Let's go to dodecahedron, roll the dice. Hey, we got a seven. And then let's try an icosahedron, roll the dice. Hey, we got a five. Octahedron, roll the dice. Hey, I've got a four. Tetrahedron, roll the dice. Hey, I got a four. So there you have it. That's how you can write a button control in MathCAD Prime 10.